Hi everybody, it's Webby and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you around the brand new 2021 Skoda Octavia VRS wagon. Um, this is a brand new car, that's literally just come out here in Australia uh, in the last few weeks. So I'm really excited to bring this to you. Um, there's a lot of brand new technology on this car. Um, as you probably know, it shares a lot of technology in the platform uh, with the Mark 8 Volkswagen Golf. Uh, so if you've seen one of those or you've got one of those, you'll obviously see a lot of similarities. Um, so yeah, let's get stuck in, let's have a look around the car. Um, and yeah, I'm quite excited to see what this is all about. So let's start at the front of the car, where you can see lots of different styling cues um, for this brand new model. There's lots more sort of sharp creases and lines, things like here on the bonnet. Uh, headlights have all changed, the front grille has changed. It's a completely different design. Uh, and I have to say, I think it looks fantastic. You can definitely see the German influence on this car, because if you took the badges off, you could easily be mistaken for thinking this was a Volkswagen or an Audi, uh, which is obviously all part of the same group. Under the bonnet, we've got the same two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine as you'll find in the new Mark 8 Volkswagen Golf. So that means 180 kilowatt and 370 new meters of torque uh, put to the front wheels, driven through a seven speed dual clutch transmission. So looking at the new Octavia from a side profile, uh, and again, you can see all these sort of angular lines down here it's definitely got very much of an Audi look about it. Um, again, take the badges away, could be an Audi A4, an Audi A6. Uh, that's how good this new Octavia is. So as you probably already know, the RS is the top of the range in terms of the Octavia lineup. Um, so that means everything is a lot more sporty. Uh, we've got things like these fantastic looking 19 inch wheels. We've got sports suspension. And then when we come around to the back of the car, this is actually my favorite view of the car. I love the new styling of the car. Um, different shaped rear bumper, the new rear tailgate, the new rear, rear lights. And I love the way this new Skoda badge is now in gloss black uh, in individual letters as opposed to just the round badge that you used to have before. Um, you've got your VRS badge in there, you've got these lovely gloss black inserts down the bottom of the car. And there is actually rear exhaust under these little bits of trim here as well, which is good to see. Um, but yeah, in terms of rear styling, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And the Octavia has always been available as a wagon and a sedan or a saloon, depending on where you're from. But the wagon, strangely enough, has always made up a bigger, bigger proportion of sales. Um, a bit like things like, you know, with Audi put all their performance cars as wagons, um, RS4, RS6, they're all wagon uh, body shapes. So buyers of the Octavia have leant towards the wagon for its more practical um, sort of carrying capacity, I suppose, if you like. So if we look inside the boot, we can actually see why so many people buy the wagon. There's absolutely heaps of space in here and it's nicely proportioned as well. There's no sort of cutaways with the wheel arches and lost bits of space. Uh, it's a very practical way of looking at things. So this sort of three quarter angle is another um, sort of great piece of styling as well. I love the way the rear lights wrap around to the rear three quarter panel. And it looks like these rear wheel arches are a bit puffed out as well. Um, even though it's just because the car sits a bit lower and we've got these 19 inch alloy wheels. But just just the whole styling exercise of like the rear coming around to this sort of rear panel here just looks absolutely superb. Now in terms of pricing, the RS wagon starts at $49,000 plus on road costs here in Australia. The only options you can have uh, are the sunroof that I mentioned earlier, plus also a premium pack, which I'll show you some of the features of when we get inside the car. Um, so let's do that next, let's have a look inside and I'll point out the new interior of the uh, 2021 Octavia RS. So stepping into the new RS, and immediately you can tell the difference from the previous model. The whole dashboard is redesigned, uh, feels much more premium, but it also feels fairly uncluttered as well, which is quite nice. Uh, there's not buttons everywhere, um, something I'll come to a little bit later when we talk about the infotainment system, um, but it just feels a nice place to be. There's lots of high quality materials like the suede up here uh, on the dashboard, a nice red stitching. Uh, on there around the steering wheel and also on the seats so it does make you feel like you're in a special car as i said this car has got the premium pack on it uh, part of which uh, are these electrically adjustable and heated seats uh, they've also got a memory function and a massage function as well uh, so there's plenty going on with the seats which is nice to see uh, we also get things like a head-up display uh, we've got adaptive chassis control we've got an upgraded uh, canton speaker system so they've really gone the whole hog um, in making this car as good, as good as it can be. Uh, coming up to the dashboard, we've got this full digital screen uh, in front of us there. 
So everything is controlled uh, via the buttons on the steering wheel. Uh, so trip computer, you can change all your displays, adjust all your different functions on there, which is quite handy. Now coming across to the new infotainment system on top of the dashboard, it has come under a bit of criticism um, from other videos and reviews that I've watched and read because they're saying that not enough of it is actual physical buttons, but I actually think it's okay. Uh, I like the fact the Apple CarPlay is wireless. Uh, you've also got a wireless charging pad for your phone as well. But then you've got things like your temperature controls for your air conditioning, your heated seats are on there as well. Obviously you control all your Apple CarPlay via touchscreen. Um, but then you've got your menu buttons there as well, so you can go in to adjust all your different settings on your car. Your home button will give you a mixture of like your navigation, your radio, um, car and phone settings. So it's actually quite easy to use. The volume control is a bit of a strange one. You've got this bar that runs across the top of the dash just under the screen. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but again, like anything, once you play with it a few times, it's actually quite easy. We come down to some buttons just below the screen. Uh, and as you can see there, you've got front and rear windows. Uh, you've got your climate control settings, which once you press that, they come up on the screen there. And it gives you some handy shortcuts as well. So depending on where you want the airflow to go, you can just press one of those buttons and it'll instantly uh, obviously change the airflow around for you. Uh, we've also got park assist on this car as well. We've got the different driving modes, uh, which again, when you press that, it takes you to a screen on the dash where you can then choose which driving mode you want. You can then still press the buttons on the actual screen to change what you want to look at in terms of adjusting the settings for the uh, driver profiles. If you come to the set button, this takes you to sort of vehicle settings. So you can go into there and adjust certain settings about the car itself. You've got your vehicle settings. So you can adjust different things about the inside and the outside of the car. It's nice that they break it down into different sections because you can just go into the particular one that you want rather than just some random big menu. Uh, I actually quite like this sort of layout. I think it's quite easy to use. So coming down just underneath there, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a wireless charging pad just here. We've also got two USB-C fast charging ports as well. So if you prefer to plug your phone in via a cable, or if there's more than one person in the car that needs to charge their cable, then they're catered for as well, which is good to see. We've then got this new style gear selector. So gone is the old um, sort of big gear selector that you used to have in the older cars. It's now just like a rocker switch. So we've got the park button just here. And in the gear selector, you would just push up or down, depending on whether you want to go into reverse or drive. So it's actually a really, really easy system to use and not dissimilar to what BMW do with their gear sticks either. Now looking at the materials and the quality of plastics around this interior, you can see the beautiful leather and suede sport seats with the RS logo there on the top. And if you look around the doors, you can see the beautiful suede and leather on the doors there as well. That follows around again to more suede on the front of the dashboard. And then this carbon fiber trim that goes all the way from the driver to the passenger uh, and looks really sort of sporty, but also premium at the same time. If we come into the back of the new Octavia RS, there's loads and loads of space in here. I've got plenty of leg room. I can stretch my legs out, my feet fit under the front driver's seat. And I've got plenty of headroom as well, even though this car has got the optional sunroof. You've got little pockets on the back of the driver's seat for handy for putting uh, maybe an iPad down there or a book or something for a couple of kids. We've got rear air vents, but we've also got temperature controls for the three zone climate control, which is part of that premium pack I mentioned earlier. Plus, we've also got heated seats for the outer two seats as well. Um, so just something to make the car feel a little bit more premium. Further down, we've got a couple of USB-C fast charging points as well. So the kids in the back will never sort of uh, run out of battery on their devices, which is good. Some other nice touches are the built-in sunshades in the windows as well. Particularly good on a hot day. Visibility is actually quite good here in the back as well. Um, particularly helped by the fact you've got the optional sunroof. But, e but even looking through the side windows, visibility is good. And you've also got a decent view out the front as well. We've obviously got a rear armrest here as well. A couple of cup holders as you'd expect. But you've also got a little ski hatch, which when you fold that up, just means you can put longer objects through from the boot with them to fold the seats down, which is actually quite a good idea. 
The two outer seats obviously get the uh, ISOFIX child seat fixings as well, which is pretty standard these days. Um, but even as a rear passenger, you don't feel like you're left out back here. It feels really comfortable. It still feels very premium. You've still got all the suede on the doors, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice place to be back here. Yeah, you wouldn't be disappointed if you had to sit in the back seat. Jeez, this, uh, this new two litre engine sounds fantastic. I suspect there's some sound coming in through the speakers um, to make it sound a bit more meaty. But initial thoughts are very good. So let's take it out for a drive and see what it's like. As a side note, and whether you think this is uh, relevant or not, I've actually recently changed my own car. I've now got a Golf GTI, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how this compares because essentially they're the same car underneath. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the two compare and the way they handle and drive. Well, initial acceleration is definitely impressive. Um, aided by that sort of noise I mentioned a minute ago from the speakers. Um, it almost has got a, a Subaru sort of sound to it. I don't mean that to be derogatory to the RS, but it's got that sort of boxer sound to the engine. And considering we're on 19 inch alloy wheels, the ride doesn't actually seem too firm. I'd imagine that would, would get a little bit busier though when you put it in the sport mode. Um, so at the moment we're just in the normal driving mode. I have to say it does feel a lot more premium and you know sort of grown up in here now. You can definitely see where they've spent a lot of money on the, uh, you know, the better quality interior and nicer materials that they use. And obviously that now justifies the fact that it's a bit more expensive than it was before. This particular version uh, so with the sunroof, the premium pack, the metallic paint on road is about $64,000 here uh, in Victoria. Um, so it's not a cheap car anymore. But then when you compare what else you can get for this sort of, this type of car, then actually it's not too bad value for money. The engine and the gearbox are really well tuned to each other. There's no sort of delay in downshifting when you want to put your foot down a little bit. Uh, the engine doesn't change gear too quickly when you're sort of just pulling around town. It's, it's always kind of there and readily available for you. The steering's also nicely weighted as well. When you turn the wheel, you know exactly what the front wheels are doing. Unlike some cars where power steering these days can be a little bit wishy-washy um, and sort of over-engineered, so to speak, where you don't really know what the front wheels are doing. Um, but yeah, this is a really good setup in here. As I mentioned earlier, most people buy the wagon version of the Octavia RS, but I'm actually really keen to see what the new sedan looks like, because in the pictures it looks awesome. Uh, that new rear angler styling looks really smart. So just sitting in here, I actually really like the fact there's not too many buttons everywhere. I like the sort of the minimal uh, sort of effect on the dashboard, because at the end of the day, all the settings that you change on the infotainment system, you'll probably only change once or twice until you find your preferences and you stick with them. And then it's only adjusting things every now and then, so I don't really think it's such a big deal um, to have to use that infotainment system to change settings. It's actually really quiet in here as well. Um, I can't really sort of detect too much road noise from the big 19 inch wheels, uh, so it's actually quite impressive. So there you go, there's the first quick look at the brand new 2021 Skoda Octavia RS. A huge thanks to the guys at Peninsula Skoda for lending me the car for the video. If you are looking for a new or a used Skoda, I'll put all their details in the description below. Uh, give them a call, they're a great bunch of guys, so they'll be able to help you out. In terms of the car itself, really impressive. It's a big evolution and a big step over the previous model. There's more tech, it feels better, it rides better. 
The exterior styling is definitely more modern and up to date than the previous generation as well. Um, and it's just one of those cars that is a bit of a do everything and actually would be a really good alternative to an SUV. Everybody wants more space in terms of like cabin space, uh, boot space, and that's why people buy SUVs. But before you do that, have a look at one of these because I think it will really change your mind. It's such a fantastic car, great package. It's got loads of technology. It's got a fantastic engine and gearbox. Um, have a look at one of these before you go out and buy an SUV. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It helps YouTube recommend it to other people and helps the channel grow as well. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to find out when the next video goes live because I've got some really cool stuff planned for the rest of the year. So thanks very much for watching this video today. Hope you've enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you all in the next one.